Oh god. That's how good they are. <laughs> these, and that's a good fish too. Like these things are just amazing. The bass love that and the action that you can get straight away is exactly what you need with these early season fish. That... Yep. Yes. There we go. Oh, it's a good one too. Take a look at that. <laughs> Stay with me. Stay with me. <laughs> I'm gonna have to bring it in by hand. Oh, it's gonna snap me off. It's right there. Yeah, it's off. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Look at this beast. Look at that. In this video, I'm gonna take you through my early spring bass tactics. Chasing them on lures this morning. I've got out here fairly early and I'm gonna test a whole heap of lures. Let me take you through what I've got this morning so you can have a look there. I've got a box with me here just full of plastics and little poppers some diving lures, there's a whole range of stuff in here. Little chatter baits and things, spinner baits. Uh, there's a pompadour there. And what else have I got? Some little walking frogs, lots of weedless stuff. There's, here's some of Holt's new swim prawns. And some slim swims from Z-Man. Basically what I'm trying to do is work out what the fish are gonna be biting on. I've started this morning, I'll show you what I've got rigged to start the morning. That's a calling pepper by TMCO. And I'm running with that to start just to see if I can wake a couple of bass up. There's balls in there, nice big cup, and it's a slow moving surface lure. So that's the thing that I'm gonna start with. I've also got rigged uh, just a skimming plastic. So I might do some skip casting with a little uh, weedless worm rig on it. And then I've got one of my favorites, these Z-Man finesse frogs rigged as well. Well, I'm, I'm a little bit reluctant to get that going mainly because in summer that thing will fire, but it's a fairly fast moving lure. That's the way that I like to use it. Initially, I'm gonna be using this popper. And the reason is because I can move it so slow. And early springtime, a lot of the time, the bass are a little bit reluctant in comparison to summer to get after a lure, especially on the surface. So I don't want to go straight to subsurface. I'm out here nice and early, and timing's really important, especially early spring to get that bite period. Uh, but I still want to chase some fish on surface. So I'll go with this popper and see how I get on. And if it doesn't work, I might go a little bit more subtle. But we'll see how we go. I've got lots of lures in to try this morning. I'm just gonna see what I can get to work and hopefully it's on the surface. But regardless, I'm gonna try and get after some fish. So stay with me and I'll share my tactics with you over the next 20 or 30 minutes. Let's do it. The way that I'm fishing this calling pepper is a lot slower to the way that I'd fish it in summer. So just throwing it out, letting it sit there and letting those rings come all the way out, you know, two or three metres away from the lure before I give it a tap and get it to move. And then long pauses. And that's because the fish might be a little bit more reluctant to get after a lure. They're not going to chase something down like they will in summer necessarily. So much slower retrieve to give the bass a chance to come and get it. And my thoughts are starting with this calling pepper. It's got a nice big cup, a lot like a like a Lucky Craft G Splash, but it's got a smaller, shorter profile. So I still want to be able to call these bass up. And hopefully that'll be enough to get them interested, otherwise if they don't like these sort of deep bally sounds and that popping noise and the bigger profile, then I'm going to start and change things up downgrade. I've already noticed that there's, you know, from, from winter a lot of the weeds died back. 
So you've just got basically a straight bank and the only sort of cover is the grass on the edge or the overhangs. Whereas during summer when there's all that weed that grows, it comes out and the bass will hide up in that. So there's every chance that they might be starting a little bit lower and sitting down heavier to the cover at the bottom. It's not going to stop me doing a little bit of topwater fishing though, first thing in the morning. I've seen a couple of early surface hits. And one sounded pretty aggressive, so I reckon I'm still a chance. But if you were just wanting to get after numbers, you might start first thing, you might just start with a really small little diver or something like that. But um, it's a lot more fun doing it this way, trying to get something happening on the surface. There's areas of heavier cover that I could be fishing, but I um, just wanted to try this stuff where this grass is along the bank first. So the change of the seasons just started to happen. I drove down over Kurumban Bridge yesterday. Oh, there's a, there's a tape. You can see how, how reluctant that bass was. It wasn't like a slap, it was just like a slurp down. It didn't crash all over it the way that you'd see it in summer. <coughs> so that's what it's going to be about. I guess I was driving down over Kurumban Bridge the other day and the, the water dragons were out on the road and for me that's a, a big sign of the change in season. So they come out and they start baking themselves on the bitumen. And the insects on the oval at school, as soon as that all happens, then I start to get pretty excited about the bass fishing. So it's all going to start to come on over the next couple of months. It's a really exciting time. That's one of the things with these poppers, if you're fishing at early spring, is to go after, you know, go after these bass but you've just got to be really patient and I replaced the hooks on this last night just because I know those subtle takes sometimes they'll just even nose it in springtime they won't even open up and, and suck it down they'll just come up and knock it with their face so really sharp owner hooks or whatever you use decoys or gamagatsu whatever you like to use you've just got to be super sharp Uh, one thing that I'm a little bit conscious of now that I'm fishing, I can see like, I can see there's a fair distance between those root systems and the water level, which when it's higher, if I catch the water when it's a bit higher, then I've got a much better chance of some bass sitting up under those little undercut banks. I just got to hit, then I'm on. Yeah. That was just sitting up there. Again, a really subtle take. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's gone. Pulled a little bit hard, I think, and he was sort of facing me like mouthing going. Ch -ch -ch -ch. It was legal, but again, a really, really subtle take off the surface. wasn't I wasn't moving it or anything. Oh well, they're still in there. We've got to keep going. I was just sort of starting to to question whether they'd be up against that bank, but I'll keep persisting. started to go through my head, you know, whether whether to persist like this or to change over because the the bank's so far down now and I don't want to just persist with a with a popper just because I want to get a, a fish on a popper and on surface early morning and then miss the whole bite period and not be able to get anything on any on, you know on anything once the sun hits the water and gets a bit higher.
top of this wave makes you want to fish weedless so much more. It's nice to have all those hooks down there as well for those more subtle takes so that you can catch them when they come up and nose the, nose the lure. It pays just to leave your lure in there a little bit longer too. And I mean, in summer, you usually only fish the first couple of metres of water consistently anyway, but it's even more the case in springtime, like the fish are not going to come chasing it, so I'm trying to spend that time just right in against the bank. Oh, just got pulled under then. Like, you, you probably wouldn't have even seen that on the camera. That's how subtle they are, just nipping at the back of it. Come on. different tape. It's so good to be back out here doing it though. It's been such a long way to get back out and have a go at these bass. I'm just going to change this out now because I've been fishing with it for about 15 or 20 minutes. I've had three hits, one, um, one miss where I had it on and just pulled the hooks on it. But they're only really subtly hitting it, so I'm going to try for something that they're a little bit more convinced of. But before I put it away, I just want to share with you why I use this one. So uh, I went for this pattern because it's like a, it's a fish or a little perch pattern or a little grunter. And I thought at this time of year when the, the vegetation's all receded over the winter and so th there's a lot less likely chance that there's going to be these shrimp kicking around and feeding on the grasses and the frogs in and along the bank just because there's no cover in there as much like you'd expect in winter. So I thought maybe more bait fish style lure to start but um, I'm just a little bit more desperate to get onto a, uh, onto a bite so I'm going to put this away. I'll try the finesse frog and give that a shot for a couple of minutes and then try something else I reckon. So I'm going to try the finesse frog and um, hopefully that gets something happening even though the frog concept's a little bit on the outer compared to what it would be in summer I'm going to slow the retrieve right down and just get those paddle, paddling back legs just to throw out a couple of little bubbles and then I'll just use lots and lots of stalls. I know the fish are in there, they're just really reluctant to get after something on the surface at the moment. See what we can do, so... There's my little finesse frog, and if you haven't seen how to rig these, I've got a little plastic keeper in there, and how I like to work them, you need to check out some of my other videos on these. I've got about four videos that I ran last summer that just shows you exactly how to fish them, and they're really, really successful. Um, during summer, see how they go now. Favourite thing about these is you can be really reckless and just flick them in and they skip really well. They can still get that bubble trail going, just going to give it a lot more stall time in there. perfect sort of spot that you want with these little frogs. The kind of spot where you get where you get a frog sitting in there, you know. Just don't want to get caught up like that. That can happen because I just cheated a little bit and tried to pop the little hook out too much. Would have been better off just adjusting it so that in that instance there and against that hard cover it wasn't going to hook up. Whereas most of the time if the cover's not heavy over top you can just cheat and pop that little worm hook out a little bit more. Just getting real 
little naughty just throwing it literally right on top of everything in there. Just gone for, you can see I've got a real dark coloured one on. If the sky, if it was overcast, I'd probably go for a bit, a bit more of a lighter, a lighter colour, like the greens. I love the greens and they show up really well with overhanging cover, but because it's sort of a bit more open here and there's no clouds, I've gone for this really dark one. Hopefully that shows up a little bit better of a silhouette, like a profile for the bass as they're looking up on it. Just copped a little wind knot. Mainly because I'm sort of overcasting it to flick it in and skim it in. Got to be real patient with these and not go trying to pull it out, especially if you're using light braid like this. You're better off unpicking it with a hook or something. That's it. Come on, bass. Come on. bass hunting a shrimp. Let's see if I can just quickly flick out and get it. Oh, we got the shrimp. You might be able to just see this. Oh, he's still after it. Come on, grab mine. Oh, he's still going for it. Get into one bassy boy. What are you doing, mate? Oh, he's just slamming that little shrimp. Yeah, I got it. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Just out in the midwater here, there's... <laughs> it just pays to be so tuned into what's happening. I always think about coming out and listening to music while I'm out here. But you wouldn't... You, I wouldn't have got this fish because I, I only heard it and it was such a, a subtle first hit. But he's... He's been after the shrimp and he's just had a go at my finesse frog. Take a look at this. Yeah, he's a beautiful fish too. Come here, mate. Oh, show yourself to the camera, buddy. Show yourself to the camera. Yeah. Springtime's happening. Bass season's open. And there's my first. He's a gorgeous fish. He's probably up around that... Uh, 37 I'd say, 38, bit of a twin tail. And something's happened there, it's been jammed in against something. Oh, bass season is on baby. Let's go and get a couple more. That was too easy when they're chasing bait on the surface. You just got to throw right on top of it, I missed it the first time. Stunning. You go. Now I've got a bug. Bad. <laughs> There's going to be lots more bass fishing videos to come, I think. Having these three rods rigged so that I can just pick up and throw at one if I'm if there's something happening on the surface, you've got to be able to get on it. it's like that too so something like this finesse frog or even like a tiny little slim swims or something like that so if there's a bait fish or a, you know a frog or a shrimp a lot of the time it is it's little shrimp that just get shunted out into the midwater and then 
the bass and the brim sort of play with them a little bit when they're trying to hit them. And you can you can get after them like that. Another really good lure to use for that is to have on a little Husky Jerk 6, a little black and gold one for bass, a little HJ 6 or 7 floating lure, and uh, they're deadly for that style of fishing. If you see a hit and you throw, throw onto it or a little boil, often bass will, will come after that stuff. It's a really easy way to get onto the fish. Yep. Oh, missed it. Yeah, the frogs are working, the nice frogs are on. He was a bit further out too. He pulled it under, that's why I sort of lifted the rod tip a little bit, because I saw the line tighten. He, he hadn't felt the hooks, but he, he pulled the frog down about two feet. just doing that burn and stall technique. I'm gonna change and get down under the surface now and fish this little weedless eco gear bolt. It's a four inch lure, which is probably on the bigger side for a, for a bass. But um, when they're riding hard against the cover, it gives you a really good idea of whether there's some fish around. So the bass are still really aggressive towards these things. And they're great for skipping. So I might go for, skip, for a skip for about 10, 15 minutes and see if I can get anything. But if nothing happens, I reckon I'll just change over and fish like maybe a little chatterbait. We'll see how we get on. Right, so I've just been skipping this four inch bolt around and I'm getting the feeling like it's oh, it's not gonna it's not gonna get the um, job done. It's a little bit big I'm feeling I'm thinking for the start of the season. So I'm loving skipping it, but I might try one of these um, these weedless hell yeah chatterbaits, which the boys at Bass Life have been smashing bass on. Tim Bishop uses these. I think they're sort of his design. Or him and Eric. I'll give you a look at it. That's it there. So it's just got a weedless hook in there and the little tail, which you can use interchangeable stuff. And then it's just got that skirt with the head there and then the chatter on it. So I'm gonna give that a go, because there's a bit of cover up here, these little fallen trees, and I reckon they're gonna be the go. It's a lot slower too, so it's, it's good, because I think when the, the fish are a little bit sluggish, running one of these things and just slowing that retrieve down, they just move slower through the water, but still put out plenty of vibe. I reckon this might be the thing to get fish going. Definitely slowed down that surface feeding moment this morning where I sort of heard a couple of hits and then got that interest on surface. That's all finished now. There's nothing happening on the surface. I haven't heard a hit for about 
half an hour now and I'm fishing so much cover that um, it's sort of every 15 minutes or so you'll hear something bust or boil or push some leaves in, in the trees around. Alright, so that's it. Let's go and get after some of these fish with a chatterbait. Straight up this little section right here. good with a weedless chatterbait. If you just overcook your cast a little bit, it's not the end of the world. Man. That four should have slowed down. Just good and you can see that rod tip just going as the little blade at the front, the little chatter goes hard. this thing and just dance it through cover like nothing else. It's epic. No wonder the Bass Life boys froth this. This thing's going to catch me some fish this morning. Yes! Oh, that took about three minutes. These things are awesome. There's no question, when you start to fish with one of these, well, it's a good fish too. When you start to fish with one of these lures, you just, your confidence goes so high because of the action on this thing. Oh man, these things are amazing. This is early springtime fishing and the fish aren't biting their faces off yet. I can't wait for when they are, but they are loving this weedless chatterbait. It's a beautiful little bass. It'd be legal, he'd be on about that 35, 36. Look at the colors through it and the scale pattern. Beautiful big fin structure there. God. This is the little lure that's doing the damage this morning. It's a weedless finesse chatter. If you like chasing um, these bass in and around cover, this thing just allows you to get right in there because it's got that weedless rig back tail and the action on it is just amazing. It gets this wiggle going. I'm gonna keep persisting with this now because my confidence, as soon as I put it on, my confidence just jumped right up with the action on it and the vibe that it throws out. You can feel it right through to the butt of your rod. I'm just fishing, there's a second ledge here. You can see the way that this bank sort of drops off. During summer, it's just covered with weed and the bass sit in there, but there's a ledge there. Now I can see the ledge that sits under all of this weed. And I'm just sort of bringing it over that ledge and then slowing it down. And that bass just smashed it off the edge. A much more aggressive take than anything I've had this morning. So that sort of tells me that this is it's going to work. This thing's going to do some damage this morning if I can keep finding these little ledges. The sun's just poking over, so the little blade at the front's going to be throwing out a little bit of light on the way back.
fishing this brackish water and I was just stalling it's a beautiful big reef <laughs> I don't know how many blokes go chatterbait fishing for brim, but there you go. He's got big chompers on him. He won't let go of my plastic either. <laughs> Using one of Tim's chatterbaits. Oh. Amazing. moment it hit the water. So he wants it again. Oh, he's gone in there and then there's something in there. Oh, yeah, he's on. Got it. Oh, nice fish, too. Come up, big girl. Beautiful big bass. Right in against that weeded edge. Yes! Yes! The lights, it's like this transition period, the lights just started to get high and I decided to come further down the system and fish the open area first just to cover a lot more water before I head right up into the, uh, the backwaters to get some more cover and get that, uh, get into the shadows. Oh, damn, big solid fish, like just fat. Finesse chatterbait. Look at that. Oh, it's so cool. He's huge in the tummy. Huge in the tummy. The spawning period is supposed to be finished or, spinning, or, or finishing. I might just root. I'll look after this one. Dropped it again. Oh, okay. Come on, buddy. Back you come. He felt those hooks. I can't see him coming back. <laughs> 